Hey, what is going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. It is a gorgeous day out here in Michigan. It is currently 65 degrees, which is probably the hottest day we'll see all month. So I took that opportunity to take the car out, wash it, do some filming. But before we get into the topic of today's video, I want to show you guys something that I've kind of wanted to do for a while. And that is to sticker up the M3. You got FCP Euro stickers, AKG, whatever. But I also want to show you, so this is something that's kind of cool. So this is called a Ren Tap. I don't think a lot of you are familiar with this, but basically what it is, it's a little sticky thing you put on your window and you can use your phone to essentially see what has been done to a car, like the car build. I'm not affiliated with them in any way, but I think it's a cool product. It was $10, so I'm gonna give this a shot and you know, try it out while I go to various car meets this season. I'll make sure to let you guys know how this goes. I'll put their Instagram down below. But I got my roommate with me, so I'm gonna go ahead and have him shoot me putting these stickers on. We already kind of figured out where we wanted to put them on the car, so let's go do that. Okay, so we got the car all stickered up, and honestly, I think it looks really good. I definitely might want to do that for a little while, but I'm gonna go drop my roommate off, and then we'll hop in the car and talk about the main topic of today's video. So now that we got that out of the way, let's get into the topic of today's video. So we're going to be talking about three things to make your BMW reliable. Now we're not going to talk about things like replace your vacuum hoses or clean your fuel injectors because those are all like, those are all things that you should do on any old car. This is going to be more specific problems to these older European cars. So to get into number one on the list, we're gonna talk about the cooling system. Ah yes, the cooling system. I feel like I've mentioned this a thousand bajillion times. Can't talk about the cooling systems enough on these older six cylinder BMWs. So let's talk about how to fix the cooling system on these cars. We'll start with the first thing. One is metal impeller water pump. The factory water pumps are plastic. They break, whatever, yada yada. You go with the metal impeller water pump and then you put in the upgraded or you have one with the upgraded bearing most of them now are at that point but early on in the run they didn't have the upgraded bearing and then instead of breaking the impellers your bearings would just wear out and the water pump would seize up if it's working so you do metal impeller get the new bearing then you're set you're golden radiator really any replacement radiator is fine i would say generally stay away from cheaper brands even if you want a new genuine BMW, that's still gonna be good for another 10 years at least. But if you do wanna upgrade, Mishimoto is pretty good. If you have an E36, you can go with an S54 radiator, which is really good. I would highly recommend that. Then obviously the aluminum thermostat housing, and then generally just kind of refresh it. If you change your coolant often enough and make sure to keep the good BMW blue stuff in it, you really won't have any issues with the cooling system. A lot of the cooling system problems come from lack of maintenance and then cause, it causes premature parts wear. If you did your cooling system every 10 years, you could even use the crappy OEM stuff and it wouldn't matter. You would never have problems with it. So I didn't wanna talk about the cooling system for too long because I feel like it's way overdone and way over like talked about, which there is good reason for. But let's get into now more kind of things that not everyone really talks about than they should. Next one on the list is going to be the oil pump nut. So this is an issue with any older like six cylinder M52, M54, M50, the S versions of those motors. To recap, the oil pump nut essentially is the nut that secures the oil pump nut sprocket to the timing chain. If that nut fails, your sprocket falls off, no oil pressure, bye bye engine. So how do you fix that? Well, you can either weld it, which is not really recommended, or you can do the wire tie. And the wire tie is what I have and that essentially secures the nut in place so that it can't unthread itself. Something else to do while you're in there that's definitely recommended is the oil pickup tube. 
Again, if you have an E36 like I do, the good upgrade is the Z3 pickup tube. The Z3 pickup tube is a reinforced version that essentially isn't as prone to cracking. Pickup tubes tend to crack over time and with wear, and then that will also cause you to lose oil pressure. Not as badly as oil pump nut, not as catastrophic, but over time that will start to wear, wear away your components. And then also while you're in there, you do oil pan gasket, all that good stuff. You can also do, if you're gonna track it, highly recommend the oil pan baffle. There are a few different brands out there, but an oil pan baffle is definitely something you want for a track car so you don't lose oil pressure. I would say though, this entire, like this, the oil pump nut ordeal is mainly more of a track car problem. If you have a street car, anything automatic really, the oil pump nut is not gonna be a problem for you. However, I would say if you're doing an oil pan gasket for any reason, it won't be that much more work to go ahead and fix it. So I would recommend that, but I would not go out of your way if you don't plan on tracking the car or maybe it's more of a weekend driver, you know the car hasn't been abused because it is kind of more of an issue that comes with higher stress conditions, more RPM or lighter flywheel can definitely be one because you can jolt that pump out of place by, you know, quick downshifts. But overall, that's how you fix that problem. For a street car, it's not that necessary, but I did want to point it out there because I think a lot of people ignore it and then their engine blows up and they wonder what just happened. But moving on to the next item on the list and the third thing, that is going to be reinforcement plates. Guys, this one is a necessity for any mainly three series. If you have a five or a seven, this is not really a problem. If you have a three series, E30, E36, E46, you need to do this. This is not an option. Doesn't matter if you have modified suspension, doesn't matter. You should do this, this is a requirement. So what reinforcement plates am I talking about exactly? Well, I'm so glad you asked. Some of the reinforcement plates include the strut tower. Strut tower is definitely highest priority on the list. Especially, I'll show pictures of the one of the E36 on screen. The front strut tower plates just go over the top of the shock, and then the rear ones, you bolt down with the rear shock. What these do is they prevent your shock tower from mushrooming and basically bubbling up and then deforming whatever. BMW makes a replacement. The genuine BMW part is the reinforcement plate. They knew they screwed up. Listen to BMW, take their advice, put the plates in. It's not just for modified cars. They put it out there because even on factory cars, it was a problem. E46s and E30s have similar problems. They have a fix for it. You should definitely do that. Now, other reinforcement plates notably are the subframe reinforcement plates, and this is definitely second most important. So the subframe reinforcement plates are required for non-AMs. If you have an M3 on the E36, you already have the reinforcement plates, except for maybe some early 95 cars, but I'm not entirely sure. And if you have an E36 convertible, M or non-M, you also have the reinforcement plates, regardless. If you have a non-M E36 sedan or coupe, listen up. So if you are drifting, tracking, or even just have a car that has a little bit of rust on it, the rear subframe mounts will have a tendency to rip out of the chassis. Go for, I mean, even like a easy, like 3000 RPM launch, or like quick accelerations, what happens is over time, the force from those things happening will cause the mounts to rip out because they didn't, there's not a proper enough surface area that the load of your entire rear suspension is being distributed through. It's just being distributed on these four tiny little studs on the chassis, which is not enough at all. Even on like non-M power, it doesn't matter. You need to do the reinforcement plates and get those secured because if you don't, you'll be like, oh, what's this weird rear end clunk when you tap the gas? And then you'll go under the car and your suffering will be moving back and forth whenever you're, whenever you mess with it. It is not a fun scenario. I know pulling the whole rear subframe out is inconvenient. Trust me, I did it. it it's annoying. You need to do it. And then E46 M3s is really where this is the worst because they have the 340 horsepower to actually tear it out easier. And they also know the reinforcements. Why did BMW get rid of the reinforcements on that car? No idea, but they did. And again, they realized they screwed up and made a replacement for it. So you, as the new owner, get the pleasure of fixing it for them. Other notable reinforcement plates, this is more gonna be for the 36, are the trailing arms. The rear trailing arms are more optional. I don't have them on mine because you have to grab the gas tank. But if you are gonna make a dedicated track car or a drift car and you're like good, 
then I would definitely recommend you do the trailing arm reinforce the plates because your trailing arms in a similar fashion, not enough metal there, they'll rip out of the chassis, whatever. I don't think BMW makes a reinforcement plate for that. AKG has a really good reinforcement plate. I actually buy all of my stuff off of AKG because they everything they have is just so well engineered. But <clears throat> anyway, the R-Tab reinforcement plates, would definitely recommend those too. If you are gonna pull the rear suspension out and you have a dedicated track car, you should do that. Front, subframe reinforcement plates, more optional, sway bar, not really. But you definitely, strut towers are a must. Subframe, if you don't have them, also pretty close to a must. And then once you get from there, recommended, but you don't have to. I don't see this reinforcement plates talked about enough on these cars. I don't know why, because they're kind of a big deal, but get those reinforcement plates in. E46 owners, I don't think the E46 strut towers are as bad, but I think they might have one. E30s are the same way as E36s. They get all crunchy and bendy, so you want to be mindful of that. But with all those said, this one's a bit of a shorter one. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you liked, make sure to subscribe, turn the bell on so you don't miss another video of mine. Like the video, comment down below what you think, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, everyone.